you know, a lot of times when we're playing Minecraft, it's just building, 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 right? You gotta get this project done. Oh, gotta do some redstone over here. Running out of resources, I better build another farm. And it's just like, go, go, go all the time, do this, do that. But have you ever just, you know, just stopped? Stop, take a moment, walk around your world, try to appreciate some of the things you built and just enjoy it. Maybe visit one of your favorite builds. I did that the other day. I went to, I was like, oh, I want to check out the windmill. You know, that was one of the first, like, highly detailed builds I ever made in this game. And I went here and it's like, ah, look at all those beacon beams. <laughs> They're everywhere. Oh, it's terrible. It's a, this is a problem that's been going out of hand for quite a while in my world. So I think it was over a year ago now, but one of you had the perfect solution to this problem for me in my comments. It just hinges on one little detail. The feature doesn't exist in the game. Mojang would have to add it. What if they made it so tinted glass blocks out the light from the beacon beam, which makes sense because tinted glass blocks out light. So you wouldn't see it above the glass, but maybe you'd see the beacon beam below the glass and it wouldn't disable the beacon like it does currently. And I think that's perfect because it makes sense. Stained glass interacts with beacons. So you'd almost expect tinted glass would do something special as well. But even if they do add that to the game, it won't be anytime soon. So we need to come up with a real solution that works now. And this is what we ended up going with. Uh, Calibrate Skulk Sensors set to a power level of four to detect elytra wings. I got a circuit hooked up to just about every one of our beacons now, like probably 10 to 15 of them I did. You can see the, the sensor over there. So now whenever I fly by one of my beacons, I can toggle it with my wings. Nice and easy, off it goes, fly by again, on it goes. Aha, uh -huh. so by default, I'm gonna keep most of my beacons off. And then if I need to do work in an area, I can just fly by and oh, on it goes, you know? And you don't have to do like a flyby with the rockets to trigger this thing. You can also just do like a jump in place elytra wing to do the trick. You see the pistons move the blocks over top the beacon beams to enable and disable them like that. And then we have a couple swords and a dropper to get a power level four to the Calibrated Skulk Sensor. And then it goes to a countdown delay circuit here, just to ensure it doesn't trigger like multiple times in a row. It's, it's gotta wait a couple seconds between each trigger. And uh, then it goes to a mono stable and then to the pistons. And that's, that's all there is to it. Got two pistons over here. Yeah, so I've done some more exploring since last episode to find the new 1.20 features and at this Lapras shaped mountain came across something kind of interesting I wanted to show you. <laughs> so after exploring a little bit, I have discovered the Minecraft structures are generating much differently in this update. Uh, I came across this and it was like, wait a second. What is this? What is this supposed to be? <laughs> you know, it's like, okay. Any ideas, guys? Uh, I'll tell ya. I'll show ya. So I looked around a bit, try to figure it out. I noticed that uh, this looked a little bit like a path over here, right? So sure enough, there is an entrance to this village over here. And it's underground. <laughs> I have never seen this before. An underground village. Very strange stuff. It's got the structures, but like, not much else. There's actually oh, villagers down here, it looks like. <laughs> I'm hoping I'll find a camel too. Um, should've brought a shield with me. Okay, we're taking some damage. I better eat and stuff. Oh dear, here we go. Round two. There we go. Oh, there's more down here. Oh, and there's a camel. <laughs> nice. <laughs> right by the well. Uh oh, yeah, let's, let's take care of this fool and this one. Uh, oh yeah, it keeps going a little bit more here even. Wow, very strange stuff, guys, I tell ya. We got a farmer over here. A lot of skeletons with no aim. Oh, and it wraps around even. We got a few of the remaining survivors locked up here, but I think that's about all there is to this. It does go a little bit further here, but not much. One more building. I think that's it. Um, then this this sandstone, I think, must go all the way up to the surface. And that's where those pads were that we saw at the top. Uh, but other than that, let's get our camel. Let's get out of here, right? 
let's see how this is gonna work hop on right and then we give him a saddle here we go <laughs> uh, can you jump this high I doubt it right not even close okay you gotta figure this out I'm gonna have to sandstone up probably although I guess it's not like a horse I can't even do that I have to build a staircase this is my first camel riding experience and it's it's gonna be one of the most difficult of my life I think <laughs> trying to get him out of here don't ever fall in a hole with a camel or you are doomed I tell you Nope, we did it. Okay, we're free. Oh, no. No. You might want to move faster. Please move faster. All right, first one's ready for shipping. But before we go through the nether, I want to try to get one more here so we can breed them. Just in case there's an accident. Now, this might not seem strange to you, but trust me, this is very strange to me. Because in amplified terrain, desert temples never generated properly. They would always be covered in sand, like totally underground. And you'd have to get extremely lucky to find one. I actually found two in this desert, which tells me that they're actually generating above ground now, which is crazy. So I thought let's check this out together, see if we get the trim. If not, we'll check out the other one. I haven't found one of these in so long. There's no chests in here. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> I didn't do, I didn't take them. TNT's still here. You know, if I was here, guys, the TNT wouldn't have been here. Um, hmm. That's disappointing. Just another example of what I'm talking about. We got ourselves a floating village, it looks like. Complete with a camel. So you know this is 1.20 generation. Here's another example of some generation that looked different to me. I don't know if it's just like a quirky area or maybe something has changed in 120. But look at the cliff all along the water here. This is so cool. It's like a 15 to 20 block cliff and then it's completely flat at the top. It would be perfect for building, honestly. Uh, but it stretches out super far like that. All the way up to here. Where it's like nice and flat at the top. And then again over here, I thought this was strange, or at least I haven't seen this before. It's like sloped and then it flattens out, sloped and then flattens out another layer and another layer like that. Uh, instead of going like sloped all the way like you normally see, it's doing these layers. Aha. Uh -huh. And I'm just having like structures that generate out of the water and stuff. Um... Floating boat here, <laughs> you know, seeing a lot of uh, interesting variations to things that I've never seen before. More trim. If you ever click a shipwreck chest and it doesn't open right away, you have uh, you have a dead map in there. <laughs> it's looking right now for any uh, any possible place for a treasure, and it's like nope, doesn't exist. So then it generates a blank map like this. Even though it says buried treasure, there is none to be found in the area. Yeah, so this is a pretty massive desert biome. I think I found four or five villages around here. Each with their own camels. So we're set on camels. We just got to move one more. There is some other stuff, though. I found a outpost over here. Which I haven't checked yet for trims. So let's do that together. I think it spawns in the, the chest up here, right? If, if there is one. Nope, denied. We're actually not that far away from zero, 00, so I'm not sure if this is the Mesa I found already or if it's a new one. But it's definitely new generation. Look at this. Uh-huh. Mesas have got to be one of my favorite of the amplified terrains because it, uh, it pretty much always looks good. Like, even if it's rough, it looks cool. It looks wacky. If it's uh, smooth terrain, uh, it still looks pretty good usually. Anyways, let's... um. Let's try find this temple. I think it was over this way. Oh, I, I gotta fly through here, obviously. <laughs> oh, so cool. All right, where are, where are we here? I'm lost. Is this another village or the same one? I think this might be the same one. No, this is a different one. I'm lost. Okay, it's official. Oh, I haven't found this one. <laughs> okay, well this is this works. Uh, we got ourselves another desert temple. The third one apparently. Uh, let's check it out. Hopefully we got some chests in this one. We do have chests. Okay, so we just got messed up on that other one, I guess. And... Empty. Regular golden apple. I'll take another saddle. Oh, we got it. Okay, cool. Two of the dune armor trims. That's what we were looking for. VIP coming through out of the way. I went right through them. 
Okay, I've noticed one little issue with the camels. My three tall tunnels aren't going to work anymore. It turns out it's faster to pull them than to ride them. Nice. Alright, let's see if we fit. Oh boy, yeah, we're good. The main thing I'm wondering about the camels is can you breed them to get better stats? More health, faster speed, that kind of thing. Something tells me this is not going to go well. <laughs> let's try. Alright, all together as a, as a family. Let's go. Good stuff. We moved our camel family over to the swamp, and now I'm going to start running them through the tester over here. So I'm going to run a parent through, and then I'm going to run the, the offspring through and see if there's any difference. I modified this to work with camels, so there's a fence gate at the top there to stop them from walking over top here. And I think I'm going to sprint through this, I guess, and try to just line it up down the middle. And here we go. And we're going to slowly make our way through the cobweb, and then we'll check our time. Time is... 3 and 37. Okay, so now the baby's grown up and we're going to test them out. It's got the same exact health, which is not a good sign. That probably means there's no difference between baby and parents. But we'll run them through the speed tester just to see. Please be different. Please be different. Oh, it's the same 3 and 37. Yep, so sadly, I think that means it is impossible to improve the stats on the camels. A bit of a missed opportunity, if you ask me. I don't see why that would be a bad thing. And what's especially weird is they just redid that code in the previous updates. Like, it's fresh. <laughs> it's been updated. It's good. Why not just add it to the camels? Uh, so, yeah, the speed's set. Their jumping is set. There's no there's no play with it at all. Uh, but this is the distance, the default, anyways. What is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. But wait a minute, there is one way we can improve the stats of the camels, and that, my friends, is with potions. So I tried out speed 2 already, does a 40% boost like you would expect. But what about jump boost and slow falling? I think these could be quite interesting. So let's give a uh, jump boost 2 a try here. I'm going to line them up like just like we did before. Alright, and then throw it on the ground. And here we go. Oh, wow. Okay, so he got some serious height there, but the distance is, like, pretty much the same. I think it went a little bit further. Let's combine it with the slow falling here. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it doesn't really do much. The problem is air friction is just so high in Minecraft that by the time you go the 12 blocks, there's, like, no momentum left. So even if you extend the jump, it doesn't really do anything. <laughs> it looks so wrong. Anyways, moving on here, I did manage to find a second sniffer egg after much searching. It took a quite a bit of time. Um, ooh, I don't think they like to breed in, if they're on leads. There we go. Yeah, so that's great. That means we can mass produce these guys. And we're going to try to get a bunch of pitcher pods today from them for a build idea I have. So I have decided, let's head over here, to resurrect the dragon build. <laughs> this has gone abandoned for a long time. Um, let's head down here. Aha! So this is new, right? We got a tunnel being built. So the original plan was to wrap it around like this, have like a long hallway, and then at the end of it, we were going to have the dragon egg. Aha! Yeah, so we want to try to give our dragon egg a respectable home, you know, worthy of its one and onlyness instead of the 10 years it's spent just sitting alone and ignored in this chest right here, <laughs> if you've ever wondered where it is. Um, but I want to try add some interesting stuff down there, some weird stuff, some some cool stuff, you know? Oh, up over here. Yeah. Okay, so I wrote out like a lore book for the world. I'm not going to read this to you. You can pause and read through it if you want. But this basically gives some background information about the, the world, the series. Uh, talks about why the world generation in some areas is strange for the... What happened throughout the patches and that and then also i talk about why my stats are the way they are i talk about the goal of the world and also this is kind of a something that comes up often in the comments is the rules and guidelines if you've ever wondered why i play the world the way i do this kind of goes over it basically the goal is to keep things as default as possible as vanilla as possible and uh, try to show people what can be done in vanilla Minecraft with the most standardized version of the game. So that's why I don't do things like uh, turn off en Enderman griefing and that kind of stuff, because by default, uh, it's on, right? So 
I want to find a home for this as well. I'm going to put in the dragon room. Now, don't hate me for this, but I'm going to switch up the color scheme for the build as well. Instead of going for the purple concrete and dark prismarine that, oh, so many of you just absolutely loved. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to try to go for more of an otherworldly feeling color scheme using some blocks I haven't used before in buildings, such as the skulk, I think will be perfect for it. So I just went over to an ancient city here. I'm going to start collecting some of this stuff. I just realized I'm playing Super Mario Sunshine right now. Somebody's vandalized the town. They've covered it with mud. It's your job to scrape it up with your trusty hoe. Every once in a while, you might get a visit from Metal Mario, so watch out. <gasps> yes! That's like super rare, right? I'm pretty sure. Oh, and a Swift Sneak 3 in the same chest. <laughs> Alright, I'm happy. I'm, I'm getting out of here. Okay, I think we got ourselves a plan figured out here. What we're gonna do is put the skulk down the middle of the path. This is gonna be our floor. Kind of the highlight of the room. And we're gonna do it in this shape like so. All the way down. And then when we need some variation in it, so it's not just one single block type here, we're going to mix in the, what are they called? Skulk vein as well, just to add a little bit of change to it, you know? Uh, and then what I want to do, I want to add some gimmicks down this tunnel as well to make it more than just, you know, a tunnel, <laughs> to make it more interesting. So I'm thinking we collect a whole bunch of these shriekers and align them on the side like this all the way down. Now, they make a terrible noise. Well, when they're activated. I need. I guess you need to activate them with what? The sensor, right? I don't know why. I thought they picked up footprints. Or uh, footsteps. There we go. But you see that particle effect? The, the O's that come out of there? I kind of want to use that in our path. But I just don't want the sound. So I'm going to waterlog these to get rid of the sound. And then I think we'll be good. Now it'll trigger without the sound, and you just imagine when we're walking down here, we're going to have the, the particle effects from that all the way down. I think will be cool. Then on the sides, I want to put some mud. Again, a darker color mixed with our pitcher plants. Add a bit of brightness, a bit of life down here. I want to add the deep slate will be our main like building material for the, the tunnel. Another dark block. And I want to mix in some of the cherry wood. Yes, that's right. I think it looks pretty good with it, actually. In places, kind of like that. And I want to put in the background behind the pitcher plants, the warped wood. This stuff over here. Aha. And then if we want to add a bit more variety again to places, we can... Let's see, make trap doors out of these. And then I'm gonna line, I think, the whole path with this. Just so we have like some kind of border on it too. I think will be cool. And I think the shrieker will still work with that there. Yeah, okay, cool. Like so, and that's kind of the, the, the basic plan. I just gotta figure out like how I'm actually shaping things exactly. And then we'll be good. But I gotta also figure out how we're gonna get a bunch of these shriekers. I'm assuming there's just some way we can add onto our already existing guardian farm, right? What happens if we put the catalyst over here? And the skull nearby, does that do anything? It's trying to do something. Hmm. The mobs need to die on top of skull. So, don't know if this will work either though, because the vines are probably in the way, right? We replace the glass with slabs, then the vines can't grow on it, I think. Okay, it's working. It's working. Sort of. Maybe. It's not crazy fast or anything. <laughs> okay. Not entirely sure how this is possible. It's a new one for me. So they're going through the portal. And somehow arriving out. Huh. There's a chance something might have got broken. Uh, I'm gonna have to figure this out. So we used to have a way of setting them to the portal. I don't I don't know if I dare go in here even. This sounds like a bad idea, especially with Mr. Pushy here. But we gotta check it out, right? What's happening in the nether? 
Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This is not good. <laughs> I can't. Oh. What in the world is this even? Okay. Okay, so they're getting... Is there any way for me out of here? Yeah, we're in the old killing chamber in the nether. Oh, I got free. Okay, let's, let's scram. Okay, thankfully the nether didn't get overrun with these guys or else my game would have been fried. <laughs> Probably crashed forever. Nobody, nobody here anymore? Good stuff, okay. So, hmm. How did this happen is the question. Okay, let's go through here. The system is so old, I don't remember how anything works. <laughs> Uh, but this is not normal. Let me tell you that. I know that much. Okay, I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and just go inside. Oh, I heard it trigger. Oh, no! <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so something is definitely causing it to trigger on its own. It's not supposed to do that. You hear the portal break? Oh, what the, yeah, thank you for coming out here and spreading all the, the goo. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. A skulk sensor spawned next to redstone and now is triggering it just randomly whenever it hears noise. Well, I tell you, I sure made a royal mess of this place, but it's, it's all good. I'll clean it up when I'm done here. Um, this is actually working pretty good now. Like, it, this was a good idea after all, it turns out. <laughs> Uh, but it's it's just really slow going here. So I learned a couple things. The sensors and the shriekers will spawn regardless of any entities around. So I even had it like destroy some item frames on me. They'll spawn in the same block as an item frame. So I don't have to worry about like the mobs being in the way of of them spawning here. So it's a 9% chance for a sensor, a 1% chance for a shrieker per 10 XP from a mob kill. Um, so guardians give 10 XP, so that means each of these shriekers represents like 100 guardians killed. Like 5,500 total there. I was hoping to get like two stacks of the things at least. Oh, we got a shrieker there. Very nice. Another one. Awesome. Um, but yeah, it's going to take a bit of time. Oh, I'm ashamed. Really. I feel terrible about it. It's been 580 episodes and I still haven't taught you guys how to make a fire flipper. One of the key redstone components to any master redstoner is the fire flipper. And it, it's been severely lacking, but that changes today, I tell you. Okay, so what you do, you get a dropper. No, you get a dispenser. Read the, read the, the text up there. Droppers don't work. Okay, you get an observer facing outward that way. And then uh, just like a redstone block that bounces back and forth from piston. And you got to put flint and steel in there, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Soul soil, not soul sand. You get the idea. Staircases up here, and then there's some redstone up there as well. Anyways, what this does is you power this to make it blue. Uh huh. And then you power this to make it orange. Is flipping fire too difficult for you? Well, don't you worry. You can also just hook it up to a hopper clock with pretty much the exact same setup, except switch out the pistons with the sticky pistons, like you do in a hopper clock. And then put your items inside, however long you want the delay to be. And look at that, it bounces back and forth between blue and orange and orange and blue and blue and orange. You cannot trigger string with an ender eye or hit a target block with an ender eye. Directly, like while it's in flight. See, if, if it touches a string, it went through the, the hitbox there. Did not trigger the lights. Likewise, if it goes through the target block, it doesn't trigger it. But once it pops off like that, then it can control something. What are we gonna be using those ender eyes for, I wonder, hmm? Any ideas? Well, let me tell you. After the tour of the tunnel, first we gotta, we gotta check this out <laughs> for it to make sense. So I've been building away here. We got the tunnel all ready for, for the tour. Uh, so a long time ago, we built this entrance with the dragon head and the lights that dim in and out like that. And we got a shrieker to make it sound like the dragon's mad at us. He's shrieking. D d leave my egg alone. Why did you kill me? I, I don't know what dragons say, but but stuff like that. Uh, a little bit goofy looking, maybe. <laughs> Be kind, please. 
<laughs> I built it a long time ago, and there were there were limitations in the game back there. This is yeah, this was actually really impressive for what could be done at that time. Yes, that's for sure. Okay. Uh so then this is what we built today. So we go down into the tunnel. And here we go, guys. Here we go. Oh my. We got the skulk walkway. We have the the particle effects from the shriekers. We have the the pitcher pods that took forever to collect, let me tell you. <laughs> and the blue fire. Oh snappers. With the warped wood animation behind it, perfectly complementing the, the pitcher pods. You know it. That's what's happening here. And what does it all lead to, you might be wondering. Well, it leads to the, the room with the dragon egg in. Oh, snap. Look at that. Look at that view right there. Aha, uh -huh. so I did a cool thing here, or at least I like this a lot. We have trap doors kind of sticking out one block, and then it goes in one block a different color. And you get like that blue and pink effect. So it's like a real highlight, like it draws your attention. That is the, where you want to be. We also have a beacon above the doors to also add light to it and uh, draw the attention. And somehow I got to build me a three by five door. I'm not the best at making doors. You know, I can I can fumble my way through any redstone, but uh, yeah, it's going to be goofy probably. <laughs> and uh, let's see. So we, we got four dragon heads here. That's what the ender eyes are going to be for. I'm gonna do like some kind of combination lock to the door, so I think, um, well, let's let's start uh, checking some things out here, I guess. Let's plow through. Where did I leave my stuff? Over here, I think. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so Ender Eyes. The plan with the Ender Eyes is very simple. Um, four dragon heads means four locks, and I'm gonna make it so you have to be in between the fire I think when you throw the ender eye and then the ender eye is gonna go into the wall there and then when it drops it's gonna trigger a redstone surge that will make one of the dragon heads start chomping away it'll be it'll have that animation then you walk up to the next one in between the fire throw it again goes behind the wall and then another one and another one there's a chance it might break you might have to throw two I don't know but if you do all four of them together, all four dragon heads will be chomping, and then the door will open to the dragon egg room. Aha! It'll be a, a big spectacle. And then I might also add like a countdown timer to it, where if you don't throw the ender eyes in time together, that uh, it resets. Maybe. Uh, also, got to decide what are we going to do about the shriekers here. So I just did like the simplest thing for today, where they just sort of. Uh, the particle effects kind of just follow us here, but we can do other things. Like we could have, for example, a minecart bouncing back and forth between the two ends, and it'll, it'll trigger the particle effects all the way down, and you'll you'll kind of see like a wave moving up and down. Uh, or we can make it activate to certain sounds or certain actions. If you guys have ideas for it, let me know. But I think it's pretty cool, even as is. We might even have different modes for it if we wanna if we wanna get real fancy with it. I don't know. Uh, also, we did do the fire flipper thing, so let's get that going. <laughs> it's not fully set up yet. Again, we got to decide what action starts this. So it's basically once we unpower it, it starts running. And look at this. So all the fire flippers turn to orange to begin with. And I got them uh, staggered. So one of them has a timing of 28 items in the hopper clock one has 32 36 40 44 it goes by fours up to 64 so they kind of do this alternating pattern which i think is kind of cool and i might make it so that when we open the door here that's when we trigger this because i kind of like how it looks with the blue fire i think it looks better but then this could be like an extra fun thing we do i'm so ashamed of myself not only did I make you guys wait 580 episodes to learn how to make a fire flipper of all things? But then when I taught you, I taught you how to do it incorrectly. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it turns out that design I showed you actually has a positional problem. I found out after I started implementing it here. So I made it a slight tweak, so it works fine now. Uh, but if you do try to copy it, just pay attention to this little little change. So the redstone does this now goes up to the observer and then the observer goes right into the dispenser and yeah the piston is right below it I'm just putting the blocks here to block out light 
leaking through the pistons. Uh-huh, yeah, I think the more I think about it, the more hooking the fire flippers up to the dragon door makes sense. Like, when you open it, there's going to be a lot of chaos happening in the dragon room. But then also in the tunnel here, I want there to be chaos too. Like, close the door. You don't belong in here. And uh, things will get wild, right? <laughs> Until the door closes. When the door closes, we'll power this circuit again. And then the beauty is, since it's hooked up to hopper clocks, they all kind of just reset back to blue. Because I'm just powering one side. So they're all shut off except for this one, and then it's going to flip. And it'll all be reset to blue the way we want it to be. Riddle me this. How did Etho get the camels to not walk around Sandy City like that? Hmm? We may never know. Uh, let's get to the comment of the day, guys, because we're out of time here. Even though I did want to do the Dragon Egg Room, we have to wait till next episode. It says, hi, Etho. I'm curious. Do you do anything to keep your voice healthy, such as vocal exercises or avoiding certain food or drink? Been watching since around 2012. Keep up the good work. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so here's here's my little secret. Don't judge me. I like coffee a lot, okay? Like a lot, a lot. Uh, I drink four cups of coffee on average every single day. <laughs> And usually I'll sip that while uh, while I'm recording. You know, it's it's nice and relaxing. It's a good good time. Uh, but I also drink about eight glasses of water every day, if I was to guess. And I usually don't chug it. I, I'll I'll sip it as well. So I I usually you know keep my vocal cords nice and lubricated throughout the day uh, is one thing. And I also try not to stress my vocal cords. Like it, I do feel it, especially towards the ends ends of the episode like this. I start fumbling with my words a little bit more. But yeah, just to give you some framework here, even though this is a 30 minute episode, I probably did talk a good six hours in the making of this episode, uh, like I do in most of them. But most of that footage doesn't make it. But that is like six hours of like nonstop talking where I'm trying to emphasize words and and put a lot of feeling into it. You know, it, it gets to you after a certain amount of time. So if I ever, you know, take it too far sometimes where I stress my voice, uh, I'll take a break if I'm starting to feel it. Um, just so it doesn't progress and get worse, because that does happen. <laughs> if I just, like, try to force my th way th through something, you know? Uh, that helps a lot. But otherwise, I just, uh, kind of pace it and, uh, get through it. And we made it to the end of another one. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Have a wonderful day. Take care. And bye-bye.